is a public meeting concerning Montgomery County Municipal Utility District number 111. Application for a new municipal wastewater facility, TIPDES, which is T-P-D-E-S, permit number WQ0015616001. I would like to first thank everyone for coming out tonight and thank you in advance for your participation. My name is Deanna Avalos and I am with the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Throughout the night, you will hear me refer to that as TCEQ. I'm specifically with the Office of the Chief Clerk. My role tonight is that of moderator, so I am going to keep the meeting flowing. Um, the purpose of the meeting is the first part after we do introductions and logistics. I will go into an informal discussion, a question and answer session. And I will invite anyone from the public to come to the microphone and ask a question. And then we have our panels here to respond to you. After the Q&A session, then we will go into what's called the formal comment period. You will have to have signed up at the registration table and mark the box that says you want to give or provide oral comment. I will call you up in the order that you signed up and you will be able to speak your comment concerns to the TCEQ and it will be official to the record and part of the permit review process. Now again, that's the second part of the meeting and you will have signed up at the registration table uh, to speak for that session. Tonight will be the end of the comment period and we will remind you of that throughout the night. So it is very important if you had not already submitted comments online to the office of the chief clerk or in writing through the mail, that you do speak your comment or you can make notes or write it on paper tonight and submit it to the registration table or any of the TCQ staff before the, before the meeting's over this evening. So if you do have any concerns and you don't want to speak, you can definitely write it down. Do I have any offic elected officials present that would like to be recognized? I'm Leah Tarrant. I'm the mayor with the city of Patton Village. Okay, thank you. I know there's one outside. He's just signing in right now. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll proceed and then he can announce himself. Um, okay, so if you have a cell phone, if you don't mind placing that on silent. Again, the registration table is available throughout the meeting. Um, it gives you the opportunity to be added to the TCQ mailing list, which, which would notify you of this application, and also uh, to receive the response to comments, the written response to comments. The restrooms are located right out in the foyer. Um, and if we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start with the introductions of the panel. So to my right, uh, representing the applicant, I have Greg Hahn, who is an engineer with LJA Engineering, their consultant group, and Chris Legant is the vice president with LJA Engineering. So they're going to speak a little bit about the application that is before TCQ and their facility. So I'm going to turn it over to them to share some information. First of all, I echo the TCQ's comments. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, we're here to talk about the application by Montgomery County MUD 111 for a waste discharge permit uh, to serve a resident, residential development. Uh, this waste discharge permit was filed some time ago. It's gone through the formal review process by the TCQ. Uh, we have uh, complied with all of the TCQ's requirements. Uh, we received some initial feedback from the public through the comments section. Uh, and we have made an, a change to our application based on those comments. Uh, on the screen to the right of me here, you will see an exhibit showing the previous location of the wastewater treatment plant, which was located right here. And we have made a change to relocate the waste, waste discharge permit and wastewater treatment plant to this location. Uh, that was in response to comments that we received from Mr. Carlisle and Milner were two of the comments. Uh, those two property owners adjacent to the area where we were proposing the wastewater treatment plant as well as the other comments that we received, uh, one of which was from Mr. Paul Krausen who lives in the Greenbow neighborhood and there was a concern by one of the residents of Allendale 
So uh, the applicant feels that we've made a change here that represents in good faith that we're working with the public. Uh, it meets the criteria as it did previously. Uh, and the TCQ has been involved in this process since day one and is aware of the change and they have accepted that change. All right, thank you. Um, also, at any time, if you cannot hear one of the panel members, if you just kind of raise your hand or put your hand to your ear like that, I'm, I'm looking out for that and I'll address it if, if some, like you can't hear what they're saying. All right, to my left I have, I'm gonna introduce some of the executive director staff. First, um, in the middle there I have John Oyunobi. He is the permit reviewer with the TCQ Office of Water Quality. He's going to talk about the permit review process and what he looks for in the application. First of all, I have to thank each and every one of you for coming out. I'm coming to see actually what TCEQ does when we receive an application for waste for a permit, such as this Montgomery County Mall number 111. On September 25th, 2017, TCEQ received the application. When an application is received in that manner, first it will be logged in and passed to the application review and processing team. The application we receive is of two parts. One is the administrative report, and the other one is the technical report. The administrative report and the technical report is passed to the application review and processing team, they review the administrative report of the application. After their review, they look into it and so on, either declare that very application administratively complete. When it is declared administratively complete, then the application goes to water quality assessment section for their own review. But in reviewing the application, information was required by the application review and processing team and that information was submitted to TCEQ for the application to be declared administratively complete. When it goes to wastewater assessment section, first it goes to the water quality standard and implementation team. They look at the technical aspect of that very application and map out the route this very discharge will go from the wastewater treatment facility down to the receiving water body. As they map out the route it will go, they have to ensure that every water in the state that this very, this very effluent will pass through is being protected and they will assign a DO, what we call dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is essential to ensure actually that the standard of any water in the state that that very effluent passes before getting to the receiving water body is being protected. As they do that, that application goes to the modeling team. The modeling team looks at the, at the application and tries to assign effluent limitation that will ensure that that very DO that has been assigned by standard and implementation team is being maintained. This is extremely important to us. As they do that, that very application will go to either the biomonitoring team. What is the biomonitoring team? The biomonitoring team will look into the application itself and so on and try to add some monitoring and limits into the permit. This is only done when that application will discharge a maximum of about 1.01 million gallons per day, which we call 1.0 MGD. In this case, the Montgomery County mod number 111 at the final effluent, at the final phase, will discharge up to 1.0 MGD. First of all, the permit will discharge 
0.125 mgd, which we regard as the man of pounds. Secondly, to have to discharge 0.25 mgd, but in course of time, as the development grows, then they will need that very final phase. But in drafting the permit itself, we focus on that very maximum this very facility will discharge in order to assess it, to see whether this very permit will be approved or not approved in this case. But in this case, it is certified that Montgomery Ward, mod number 111, met all the specifications in accordance with the rules and regulations of TCEQ and any other rule at all based on TCEQ policies and EPA guidelines. It meets all those guidelines. And that very, at that very point in time, the permit will flow to the engineer that will draft the permit. As I was introduced, my name is John Anyonobi. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Texas, and I'm, I'm the coordinator of this very permit because I'm the person that put this permit together that is certified by the executive director that if this permit is so, if this facility is so protected in the way this very permit is written, it will protect the waters in the state, the aquatic life, and the environment. So looking at it in the, look, looking at it rightly, we follow so many rules and regulations in what we do. One is the, as the effluent limitation is assigned by the modeling team, we have to follow that very effluent limitation to make sure that all the effluent limitation that is assigned by the modeling <coughs> team is followed accordingly and very strictly. As we do this, what we, the instructions that we follow is predicated on the rules and regulations of the state. One of them is the application processing. We do not process application by opening the application and processing it. We are, we are guided by the rules and regulations, which is 30 TAC chapter 281. That is the application processing team. Equally, we have another rule, which is Texas Administrative Code number three o, chapter 305, which guides the consolidation of the permit that we draft. To emphasize on this, when I speak about the permit we draft, I tell people that it's a complex document. It's not only one person that, it, that contributes to the drafting of the permit. This permit is being touched upon by so many, by so many professionals. They look into the permit and it's been reviewed thoroughly. <coughs> Equally, this permit cannot be approved until it goes to Lego. The Lego have to look at it to make sure actually that everything contained in this permit is in accordance with the rules and regulations and the law of the state of Texas. Every, every staff looks into it and so on. And at that very point in time, when that very permit is, is looked upon and uh, is complete, the next thing we have to publish the notice. The notice is a way of TCEQ showing transparency to the citizens of the state of Texas to tell you that we are responsible to you. That very notice will be published to last for 30 days. After 30 days, then the notice will close. Such as this. After today, the notice will close. Any comment that you have submitted will be responded to, to ensure actually that we are giving you actually answer to any comment that you might have. So at this very point in time, I would like to pass this to my colleague, who is the attorney with the TCEQ, to elaborate actually what is involved in this notice. Thank you very much. Okay, so quickly I'm going to recognize um, <coughs> sitting next to John is Jeff Paul, and he is a standards reviewer with the TCEQ Water Standards Implementation Team, 
and in the audience uh, with us is Kristen Sater. She's a modeler with the TCQ Office of Water Quality Assessment. So those are two of the subject matter experts that John referenced in his permitting review process, and they're here in case to field any questions related to their, their part of the process and their subject matter expert. Um, so Ashley McDonald, as John was stating, is an attorney with the TCEQ Environmental Law Division. She's going to speak to the administrative process, basically the public participation component, where we are today and where we go from here. Good evening again. My name is Ashley McDonald. I'm with the TCEQ's Environmental Law Division. Um, TCEQ, TCEQ is here tonight to answer your questions regarding this application from Montgomery County MUD number 111. Um, the public comment period for this application ends tonight. Uh, if you think you may want to uh, request a contested case hearing on this application, you must provide formal comments tonight, um, either orally or in writing. Additionally, your comments, whether they are in writing uh, or, or verbal, must include all of the issues that you want TCEQ to consider. Um, in responding to your comments, you cannot adopt another person's comments as your own, you must submit your comments independently. And let me back up, if you want to request a hearing, you have to do that in writing. Um, at the end of tonight's meeting, we will, as in uh, agency staff, will review comments and prepare a response to comment, uh, which will address all the comments that we have received, including those from the formal part of tonight's session. Uh, the RTC will be mailed to everyone who submitted a comment, as well as anyone who requested to be put on the mailing list for this application. After the RTC is mailed to you, you have 30 days to request a hearing on this application. Uh, if you have already requested a hearing, there is no need to do so again. Um, at the end of the hearing request period, uh, everyone who requested a contested case hearing will be notified that either the applicant has requested uh, this matter be referred to the State Office of Administrative Hearings or uh, for a contested case hearing or uh, that it has been set on the TCEQ's commissioners uh, agenda. If it is set on the agenda, the commissioners will make a determination on whether or not to send this application to the State Office of Administrative Hearings for a contested case hearing in which hearing requests um, meet the requirements for requesting a hearing. Um, the commission will also refer specific issues to, co be, to be considered during the hearing process. Okay, thank you. So at the end of the table here we have Sheldon Wayne. He is an attorney with the Office of Public Interest Council, and they have a very special role with the TCEQ, and he's going to speak to that. Hi, good evening, folks. My name is Sheldon Wayne, and I am a staff attorney with the Office of Public Interest Council. Uh, the purpose of my address here is just to give you an understanding of uh, the Office of Public Interest Council. I'm going to refer to that as OPIC, OPIC's role with the agency in general, and then also in this specific permitting matter. Um, <clears throat> so OPIC's purpose is to simply represent the public interest at large. Uh, we're here to ensure that the public has had a full and fair opportunity to participate meaningfully in the decision-making process of the Commission to the fullest extent authorized by the laws of the state of Texas and the rules of the TCEQ. OPIC works independently of other TCEQ offices. We're also independent of other parties, and we represent the larger public interest but cannot represent any individuals. Um, I am in my office is always available to answer any questions that the public may have about legal aspects of the TCEQ's rules and permitting procedures. And as Ms. McDonald's uh, just, ex or Ms. McDonald, I apologize, just explained, the public comment period uh, extends until the end of the meeting tonight. Um, and further, there is possibly gonna be an opportunity in the future for what's called a contested case hearing, which is gonna be very similar to a civil trial uh, that would take place in state court. So if you do wish to request a hearing in this matter, it is very important that either tonight or previously that you make or have made a formal comment on the record that raises issues that you are concerned about and that are also within the jurisdiction of the TCEQ as it relates to this permitting matter. So to be clear, you must raise all potential issues that you want addressed in a contested case hearing in your own comments. If you fail to raise an issue through your own comment, then you won't be able to litigate that issue in a later hearing. Now, following the close of the comment period, which again does end this evening, the executive director will respond to all formal written comments in a document called a response to comments. And the, the executive director may also incorporate changes into the permit or possibly not issue the permit based on those comments. Each commenter and everyone that signed up on the mailing list will be mailed a copy of this response to comments. Finally, you will have the opportunity to request a contested case hearing up to 30 days after the mailing of that response to comments. 
if a contested case hearing is held in the matter, then OPIC is what's called an automatic or a statutory party. We participate in the hearing to examine all the evidence presented by the parties, make the record as clear and complete as possible, and make sure that all the facts are fully developed so that the judge and the commissioners have the information that they need to make a sound decision. We also make recommendations based on what would be protective of health and the environment and help further the public interest consistent with the law and the rules that apply to the application and the record of evidence that's developed at the hearing. OPIC can also assist people by answering questions about the hearing process. For example, if anyone has a question on responding to discovery issues or drafting a motion, then I can give them general information about that, point them to applicable rules. However, what I cannot do is assist with actual drafting of the document or work product or input into the substance of it. Now, if you do have any questions about these procedures and you'd like any more specific information, please feel free to come talk to me during the informal question and answer period. Just come up to the microphone and ask your question, or else I'm going to be available during intermission and then also after the meeting. So please come up and we can talk one-on-one. And then I'd like to just give everyone my phone number if you'd like it. My direct extension is 512-239-3144. I'm going to repeat that. That's 512-239-3144. And again, my name is Sheldon Wayne with the Office of Public Interest Counsel, and thank you folks for coming out this evening. Okay. So here from the office of the chief clerk with me helping support the meeting at the registration table is Irma Salazar and Georgia Carol Warren. Running my audio and recording equipment is Jim Fernandez. So on that note, we will be using the microphone. It's right up front. And so when you do come ask a question and when we do the formal comments, I'm going to ask you to speak directly into it, not just for the recording, but to amplify so everyone can hear your question and hear your comments. One more number, and I'll say it a couple of times, but you can also get it at the registration table, and I can repeat it later. Tonight is not the only night to have your questions answered. If you think of a question, you know, tomorrow, next week, down the road, you can always call the TCEQ office, and we have an environmental assistance and education toll-free number. It's a number you can call to ask about specifically about this application or about the permitting process in general. And that's a 1-800 number, so it's 1-800-687-4040. In addition, if you don't have all your questions answered tonight or you think of more later, you can get the business cards of staff, and you can call them directly and follow up with additional questions. Okay? So with that being said, this is a public meeting, and I want to remind you of the two portions. This first part is just a Q&A, a discussion, to seek and find information, get questions answered. So I'm going to be strictly taking questions, and then we'll see if the panel will respond. And then the second part of it is your comments, and that is the most important part that we do need to get to. That's the comments that they're all stating that you need to get your issues on the record in order for you to file a hearing request down the road should you want to do so. So at this time, the microphone is open. If you want to come down, you want to ask a question, I'll ask you to ask a question, give them an opportunity to respond before you go to your next question. Is there anybody? Yes, sir, come on down. Well, just stand up. It's right there. So questions now for everybody and then comments later? Yes. So because, and I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't because this is not officially on the record. It's just an informational exchange. So they wouldn't consider this part of their review process. So the second part is whatever comments. In fact, if you still feel a concern after your questions tonight, you know, you may get an answer, but you may not be happy with that answer. It may not alleviate your concern. You still have more questions. You bring those back into the formal comment period. Sure. Okay. Before we start, you had said at the beginning, any elected officials here? Yes. Are there any elected officials who want to be recognized who have come in? I'll recognize him. Okay. Give me his name and his role. I met him about a year ago. His name is Bob Bagley. He's on the front row with me. He's with the Montgomery County Hospital District Board. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So, can I start? Absolutely. Okay. Paul Krause and Liv on Greenbaum, where this is going to be. I don't know who directed anybody specifically. No, just go ahead and ask it. Just go ahead and ask it. It's kind of a comment and question. Real short is, 
we only got one, this whole meeting is from one letter to one resident, one of my neighbors. Do y'all normally send out only one? Do you, do you norm, how do you do that? I, I kind of read it on your website that you have a notice depending on how many people within a certain amount of site. Um, so it's a two part, I don't want to get too long winded, but if that's the way you've always done it, and we, we, don't, we didn't like that because one person got one letter and that's why we're having this meeting. Okay, so let's do that part first. So the first part sounds to me is what are the mailing requirements that the TCQ needs to file to provide notice? Okay, so um, the notice requirements for wastewater permit application are first we receive the application. So there's the first initial notice, the notice of receipt of the application. And that notice, um, in, in the application, the applicant is required to identify adjacent landowners to uh, the location of the facility, so landowners whose property borders the facility, where the facility is located, the applicant's property, and then all landowners that are one mile downstream from the point of discharge. Those individuals must be identified as well in the application. So on top, those individuals will get mail notice. And then also the notice itself is their publishing requirements for the initial notice. Um, the notice must be published in the county where the facility is located, or if the facility is located in a city, it must be pu published in the city's uh, newspaper, a, a larger circulation. Um, then uh, after that first initial notice is mailed out, there's a second notice that's the technical complete notice. That notice is also mailed uh, to individuals who are in the mailing list and also published. Um, and in this situation, we had a combined notice, but th that notice was combined for uh, correcting the changes that were made to the location of the facility and the discharge point. But the, that, that notice, again, would have been mailed to all adjacent landowners and downstream landowners. And also, it would have had to meet those publishing requirements. Um, so I'm not sure who this individual is, but the adjacent landowners and downstream land, landowners were a uh, mailed notice on this, on this application. And in addition to those, um, the second notice, if there was anyone who had already filed a comment or requested to be on the mailing list after that first initial notice, they would have been in our system. And they too, besides the landowners that she mentioned, they too would have received this um, combined notice. So if you comment, you're automatically on the mailing list. Okay, so yes, sir. So yes, second sorry. part was, is this the way you've always done it or is it different than you've done it like 10 years ago? And a little addition to that, a little separate, but how many notices were mailed out in the beginning? At the initial, I know we, we did some, you did, there's some change, you know, some changes, but how many notices were mailed out? So there were this? three notices on this application. There was the initial notice, the notice of receipt of the application, there was the NAPTI, the notice of technical completeness, no, and then there no, was the combined notice. I mean, how many people were mailed to? Oh, um, I don't have the mailing list. That's something that's in the chief clerk's office, but if you make the comment, and I, I will uh, review it and, and respond in the response to comment, but the, 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 mail, the mailing list associated with this application is kept in our chief clerk's office at the TCEQ's main offices. So yeah, that, okay. it's on public record, and they can go back and research that in our files and <coughs> respond in writing. So bring that, definitely bring that question back to the phone. Okay. We had a follow-up? A little different question. Very different. Um, the amount of discharge from the letter we saw was uh, 1.2 million gallons a day, up to 1.2 million gallons a day. Is there any consideration of that amount of water discharge per day whenever there is a storm that's on the plant and on the neighborhood? The discharge per day assigned to the pump is, like you said, 1.2 MGD. This is a future discharge that will come when, the, when this facility is built out to the final phase. Yes. If there is anything that deals with, uh, say, stormwater, the facility have to manage it in such a way that if there is, if, if there is stormwater, they have to discharge. But that very discharge coming from the facility itself, we, we made the airplane limitation 
that is assigned to this planet. No discharge, there is no bypass in this planet. There's what we call bypass. If there is a storm that is coming, I saw on and everything, everything will be open to flow. No. Any, any discharge from this facility will meet the effluent limitation assigned to this planet. If theater is strong or no storm. Okay, that's all my questions for a moment. actually that the flood water does not get into the facility or the treatment units. Secondly, they can equally build a wall around that very facility or encapsulate the facility itself. Erect a building to cover the facility to ensure actually that the flood water does not get into the facility. Okay, I'm not trying to sound insensitive, but our concern is not with the facility itself flooding, it's with every one of us here flooding. Because we had regular rainwater that almost flooded us four weeks ago, it had nothing to do with a natural occurrence in a hundred year history. We are freaked out because we're about flooding now, and y'all are adding more to the creek flow that's pouring into the West Fork of the San Jacinto, which will therefore back up Candy Creek even further. So we could start flooding the week y'all open if we have any kind of heavy rain. Well, if this is a natural thing that occurs in the area. Our specific uh, responsibility is for this very facility that is being built. Yes, if it is a natural occurring flooding yeah, event, right. flooding events that occur, TCEQ does not have any jurisdiction about flooding. Good. Yes. Okay, I think our major concern is, is what we're doing here right now, can it affect anything with this not even going through or is this neighborhood still going through regardless of our concerns? Because if this facility opens, all of us who are having problems currently in the current weeks with regular rain, we are going to flood. I know that y'all's major concern is with y'all 
opening this facility, this wastewater treatment facility to code, and make sure that y'all are safe and using the right chemicals and the right outflow and effluent. But we're more concerned with us flooding our homes. So, so I understand your concern. Your concern is flooding. Will this discharge uh, add to any possible flooding in the area? And so our response is that we're limited by the legislature as to what we can review during the permit review process. And the concern of flooding, even though it's legitimate, it's something that the permit writer, our program staff, our technical staff is not, we can't, we don't consider it during the review. It's not that, you know, it's not gonna happen. It's something that we don't consider during the review. Now, I will tell you that the effluent limitations in the draft permit, they must be met at all times. So even in flood conditions, if there's a discharge, the applicant is required to meet those conditions. If there's an overflow, if, the, if there's a, a flooding at the facility, they must notify TCEQ immediately that it's happening and they must stop discharging or they must uh, correct the issue. Um, but flooding is something that is outside of our jurisdiction during the review of a permit application such as this. So quickly, the applicant would like to um, respond as well. So, so I think I understand your question. I think everybody wants to know here, what does, what does the 1.2, 1.3 billion gallons per day, what does that equate in terms of runoff, flood water impacts to your house? Uh, that equates to, just to give you a little context, we design stormwater facilities based on cubic feet per second. That's the unit of measure. Gallons per day is the unit of measure for wastewater flow. Uh, the equation between those two, what 1.2 million gallons per day equates to is two cubic feet per second of runoff. To put this in context, the West Fork of the San Jacinto River in a 100 year event flows 98,500 cubic feet per second. We're discharging an extra two to that number. It's a very, very small percentage. It's also very small compared to the drainage improvements that we're making for our developed flow. And what, what's not discussed here, and the TCQ doesn't have any regulation over it, is drainage is regulated by Montgomery County, and all the drainage plans are reviewed and approved by Montgomery County, and the wastewater flow that's added to the system has been studied, it's been reviewed, and it's been approved by Montgomery County currently. And one more question directed to the Alderman, I'll be the last one. Are any of these properties that are going in this new community going to be within the acreage permit limits Okay, that's it. Thank you. 
Yes, sir. My question is not when it happens, but it will happen. What do y'all do when the pump shut out? During the flood, because I see it all the time. I mean, I deal with water wells and wastewater. I see it all the time. What are y'all going to do about that? Part of the criteria when we design and, and construct it is to be elevated above a certain elevation. In the case of the wastewater plant, it has to be above the 100 year flood elevation. Um, the, the equipment that would be uh, potentially affected by submergence, anything electrical, anything, um, any pump or equipment like that are all protected from that elevation. Um, the facilities that uh, we designed uh, in, the, in the past, we had only one occurrence of a facility that did not, uh, that failed to operate because of Harvey flood elevations. So we are, are as a company, conservative in that uh, to, to, to ensure that there's not a flood. Well, you can't ensure to extreme depths, but we do take measures to ensure that, that it's possible to minimize that risk. Lift stations, uh, pump stations, as you're calling them, they do have redundancy with additional pumps. So if there's a pump failure, you can still meet uh, the criteria and pump the, the sewage or, or, or water. And another thing, y'all keep talking about the 100 year flood plan. We're, we've had floods in two years. So we're not a 100 year flood plan. We're in a two year flood plan. And I just finally got them on my ditch a month ago from two and a half years ago. So, I mean. Green, I'm going to invite you to bring that back in the formal and the comment section. As a, as a concern. Any, uh, yes, come on down. John Brennan here, I'm a candidate for Montgomery County District Court this year. So my, 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 my question for you all is, um, is there any part of this process that's filed with the district clerk's office? The reason I'm asking for that is because, um, just like this question right now, um, should something happen in the future with this project or not down the line, uh, the district clerk will be involved. So I was wondering if there's any part of this, this application process as a whole that's um, filed with the district clerk's office. not filed with the clerk's office. The uh, application and notice documents, uh, I, I do believe, identify where the application will be available to, for viewing and copying until there's a final determination on the application. But um, that would be up to the applicant to provide you with a copy of the permit at some point, if, you know, just for public access. Also, I mean, the TCEQ does have a database where you guys can look at the permit once issued. But you guys have uh, the permit application, and, um, the notices and so on, the draft permit here uh, locally until we've made a decision on the application. <coughs> Sir, you had a question? Come on down. <coughs> Actually, I have two questions. Okay, one at a time. Then. All right, first one is, uh, this discharge, you talked about the research treatment plan. After Hurricane Harvey, the San Jacinto River Authority did an emergency release that was a big event. We've had two of those, 94 and 2017. What happens to the discharge from the San Jacinto River is crested over and flooded the neighborhoods. That's my question. Question is, is you're asking the question that when the discharge come from this very facility and go to the San Jacinto River, what happened to the San Jacinto River when it crossed over? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. They did. It was to the point where I never seen flooding so fast. When we got the warning, 
it was already out there. And if you got a discharge coming from a sewer treatment plant, that water is going to be not safe for people. Yes, the fact is that this is why this permit is very, very important. When we draft the permit, the effluent limitation placed in the permit and all the monitoring requirement ensures that that very effluent coming from this very facility meets or surpasses the quality of water in that receiving water body, which is sent into the river. So the discharge from this facility will not contribute to any impairment of the water in San Jacinto River. If it creates over and floods, in this case, that means there is no impairment from this facility when it gets to San Jacinto River. That is the natural occurrence in this case, which TCEQ does not, does not have any jurisdiction. How do I know that? How you know that is that uh, this is the permit we have drafted. This permit, if issued the way it has been drafted, will not contribute to any impairment of the water in the San Jacinto River. This is conducted through all the permitting process. Yes, we have to model actually the quality of water in San Jacinto River and uh, compare it to the assigned effluent limitation which tells us about the quality of water coming from this very facility. It will not contribute to the impairment of San Jacinto River. All right, I'll have to go with your word on that because uh, leaves a lot of questions to be desired because we got flooded pretty bad. Now, if it's, they, they provided their answer, but if you still have it as a concern, you bring it in the oral part so that it's part of the record and, and to be considered in part of that review. Right now they're answering yeah, what? You've done a great job. And the okay. second one is, with the construction of your effluent discharge, I'm in a neighborhood, so in a neighborhood that's affected by other neighborhoods. I have flooded like I've never seen before. And I've lived here for 15 years. With all this construction for this drainage, the question I have is, will my, neighbor, my neighborhood be flooded more? With construction as proposed, where they make the discharge go to San Jack, where the construction costs more flooding. So that's the construction of the drainage? Yes. So um, for an applicant to come in and get a wastewater permit, and especially in this case, a new, for a new facility, um, during the permit review process, they're not required to provide any. Uh, construction schematics. Uh, they're, they're, they, they provide a general um, description of the treatment process, okay. but when it comes to construction, that's not something that we review during the permit process. Our concern is uh, what are you treating, how much you, you'll be treating, and then where are you discharging? And then construction of the facility, um, that's a process that comes later, possibly uh, after the permit has already been approved. Oh, so we have to wait for the permit to be approved. The facility will be constructed at the same time the drainage will, and that's when we find out. The, you're talking about the drainage ditch? No, I mean the drainage, the effluent drainage. Yeah, are you talking point. about the drainage that they had approved by Montgomery County that you yeah. mentioned earlier? That's yeah. a separate. I wasn't here for that. that, that <laughs> okay, so um, is that, do you think he's referring to that? <clears throat> Just in case, just for clarity, if you okay. missed my response earlier, drainage is regulated and controlled by Montgomery County in, our, in this jurisdiction. We have a drainage plan that has been reviewed and approved by Montgomery County currently, and the North Drainage Channel Project, which is shown on the screen, as well as other drainage developments inside of the north part of our track is under construction currently. Okay, so is this a pipe or a Track like the big it's a combination of open drainage channels okay. and pipes. All right, yeah, that's what I was asking about. Ranging so, anywhere from nine feet deep to 25 feet deep. Okay, my neighborhood, you know, I'm sure we don't know petroleum and gas lines, too. Yes, and that's where we have the pipe culvert crossings uh, okay. that range anywhere from dual seven by four boxes to we have 12 by 10 boxes, multiple runs of them 
uh, pretty significant drainage facilities that are proposed and being done right now. All right, and so even with this new drainage system, it's not going to remedy the flood situation whatsoever. It's just going to be for the facility. This drainage system is to serve our development, Montgomery County Mud 111, as well as the other associated muds, as well as any off-site drainage that contributes to that drainage area. Okay, based on the I'm just trying to get clear this thing. I don't know enough, but I am severely affected by just about everything that happens north of me. So you cannot block drainage. That's in Montgomery County, as well as any other regulatory entity and you have to accommodate any kind of off-site drainage that comes to you and you have to collect it as well as any developed drainage that you generate on your own. I'm well aware of it since the tax day flood, I have more water to go to my garage, my carport, and around my house than ever before. And I don't even know what's changing. Great. I just had those questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir? Hello, my name is William Wyndham. As we spoke of you in the latest terms, you said it's going to add about two foot. The facility itself, is, you know, the treatment plant, but the development, how much water will the development add if you don't have any type of retention? So our development? How much watershed would, it, would the development itself add, as you mentioned, to the two foot of the, of the plant? Well, let, let, me, let me go back one second. Two feet is not the proper term here. It's two cubic feet per second, which is a volumetric, volumetric flow, which equate, equating that to our waste discharge, that's what the equivalent is. It's two cubic feet per second. And just so I'm clear, the river at our discharge point is 98,500 cubic feet per second. So we're talking about 0.0002% increase in flow on the river. Now that's on the plant, correct? That's for the plant discharge. So and we're talking about the plant the development. The development flow is roughly about 5,400 cubic feet per second. So once again, it's still a pretty small amount of runoff for the watershed. Thank you, sir. Are there any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I'm Leah Tarrant, Mayor of the City of Patton Village. Um, we've just gone through this whole process, um, have a brand new wastewater system in the city, love it, it's great. Um, but there are several things that may be just a little misconstrued. As far as uh, Montgomery County, the county engineers approve the plans because Montgomery County does not have a flood control district like Harris County does. So there's really no regulatory agency for Montgomery County as far as requiring retention ponds or whatever. Whatever the county attorney, um, the county engineer approves is what's approved for subdivision. Am I correct on that? Basically, because there's not a flood control district. Montgomery County Engineering Department approved, reviews and approves all drainage proposed within the county. Okay, so, um, but you guys, in this whole process, did a hydraulic and hydrologic study, correct? That is correct, which has been reviewed and approved by the county. Okay, so just to let these folks know that a hydraulic and a hydrologic study, the whole purpose is to make sure that the water that this development and this plant is gonna cause, that it doesn't cause, not so much say damage, but it doesn't cause problems for folks downstream. So you have to make sure that the things that you have available like this channel, I wasn't aware that this channel was there, that's great. Not only is it gonna help with the, um, with the plan itself, it's gonna help with anything in the area as far as flooding um, at the time. So um, the other gentleman had an issue <laughs> with uh, all five of our other stations brand new, just online, the whole system, maybe a month when Harvey came through, designed 10 years ago, every one of our other stations flooded. The electrical panels on every one of them. So every one of our um, lift stations were down. So immediately when the water went away, it was our job to get <laughs> the um, generators to those, get the pumps 
replaced and it was all happening immediately. Um, trucks, we had 18 wheeler pump, pump trucks come in, but our plant was never affected. Our plant was absolutely wonderful. And even though we're here at a TCEQ uh, hearing, TCEQ's job has absolutely nothing to do with flooding. Their job is to make sure that the um, facilities that are proposed do the job that they're proposed to do to keep our water safe. Um, and our discharge, our affluent water that went into Peach Creek um, actually helped clean up the bacterial numbers because everybody had been on septic systems, septic tanks, old conventional septic tanks. And our project, um, we also paid to decondition all those tanks. So that was wonderful. Everybody went on to sewer and actually cleaned up the bacterial levels in that area. So um, Harvey, I think, was the main concern. And when I heard about this meeting, I thought, oh my God, you know. But um, it really was reassuring to know that this channel is large, you know, from what I can tell. And so there has been accommodations made for that water. Um, I mean, I'm absolutely pro-growth and pro-development. Um, you know, People be able to, to do the things they need to do, but to not affect the people downstream. And uh, it was beneficial to see that y'all had made plans and this is directly into the river, correct? It's not into the creeks at all. It's going into the river. Um, so, uh, but I just wanted to kind of help TCEQ out here too because their job, they can sit here all night and they have absolutely nothing to do with flooding. So there's no questions that they can't answer for flooding. These guys have gone through the engineer's office and we don't have a flood control district and maybe that's something that we really need to fight for in Montgomery County because until we have that, there's no regulation. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. questions. Who monitors the affluence coming out of the system? We have a self, a self reported system. The facility itself has the licensed operator itself who is trained by taking some courses at DCEQ and they are taught how to monitor all the effluence that is coming out of wastewater treatment. Facility. He's being hired by the subdivision to do this on a regular basis, weekly, daily, whatever. Yes, okay. if you look at the permit, if the way it's drafted or under other requirement, number one, we stated that this very facility has to be operated by a class, it's a higher class of an operator holding a specified license. He's above a Class C operator? Not a Class C operator. Let me tell you why it's not. Because this facility itself is, is, to be, is to be constructed in three phases. At one, at four, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.125 MGD, that will be a Class C. Okay. At 0 0.25 MGD, that will be a Class C. At 1.35 MGD, that will be a class B. So there will be a class B operator? Yes. On site. Final phase, on site. Okay. Yes. Number two, I own two houses in Montgomery County. We have Gulf States utilities. They suck. Pretty simple. We lose power all the time. I have two generators in my house. What are y'all going to do if you lose power? Because you're going to lose power. Again, let me answer that question. Like I stated before, in drafting this permit, we drafted with the code Texas, with the code of, uh, with the Texas code administrative, with Texas administrative code. 
The code that deals with your concern here is 30 TAC 217. At any point in time, this facility will have a standby generator. Yes. At each phase, like the three phases I have enumerated, prior to construction of any of that very phase, they have to send a, tra a summary transmitter letter to GCEQ. There are sections in GCEQ that are made up of engineers. Their job is to review the plans and specifications of waste water treatment facilities. The yes. reason I even bring this up is when we had Harvey, I lost power for 21 days. Okay? I was bringing gas in from Beaumont. My son is operations manager for Chase Bank for three states, thank you God. And so I could tell him, I need 500 gallons of gas, and he said, I'll have it for you tomorrow. All my neighbors were running extension cords off my generators. Uh, so if we lose power for 21 days, are you gonna have enough capacity to, to get that system continually operating for 21 days? Yes, if you lose power like that, you go statewide. Thanks to the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, the chairman of uh, TCEQ, when this was happening at Harvey, with Harvey, we were on standby, calling every waste for our treatment facility in the state of Texas, asking them what they need in order to come back to operation in this case. So y'all are going to back up whatever they need to get yes, to operate properly? We have to, we have to make okay. sure that they get what they need okay. in order to continue treating the waste water to the specification of the permit that we issued to them. All right, thank you. Are there any others? Yes, sir. My name is uh, John Lewis. I live close to uh, Cane Creek down in uh, Cane. And what I'm interested in is uh, understanding your flow rate from your uh, plant uh, and its impact on the uh, system. I'd like to know if you know uh, what the flow rates are, the average flow rates are at the points on the Cane Creek where, where, the, where it does flood, and what the maximum flow rates are, are there before it floods. Because our development does not discharge into Caney Creek. I don't have those specific numbers for you. We're discharging directly into the West Fork of the San Jacinto River. Uh, I do know the flow rate on the West Fork of the San Jacinto River at our discharge point is 98,500 CFS. Okay, so the Caney Creek uh, doesn't really enter into your uh, uh, flow, down flow issue? We are not contributing any of our drainage to the Caney Creek watershed. Oh, okay. I didn't understand that for sure. Thank yes. you. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. And then you're next. doesn't offer any kind of specialized meeting such as what you're requesting right I know I have specifically met with some of the residents already uh, and heard their concerns and, and uh, would be willing to talk to anybody tonight if we need to yes sir thank you also I understand that there's a set amount of water being disposed of can that number be raised The flow we permit, with permit is the flow requested by the permittee. Yes. Yes, sir. Which is Montgomery, Montgomery County, Mod number 111. Yeah, they request a specific flow, and that is the flow we hold them accountable and we permit. If, uh, if at any point in time the community wants to raise it, you can, you can petition the permittee to raise it. The, the, the permittee files an application to amend the permit in order to raise the final flow or the, the interim phase flow or interim phase two 
face flow. We review it, and uh, if you miss all the specification of TCEQ policy, we raise it. Yes. yes, so they basically have to file another application for any changes, right? You would you would get notice if you uh, there would be another published notice if you're an adjacent landowner. You would get mail notice. They can't go beyond what's authorized in their permit as far as flow. They want to increase the flow. They have to come into the TCQ for another permit action. So um, that's the way it works. They can't just start discharging more than what's authorized under their permit. <clears throat> okay, and kind of another part to that question, would TCEQ um, take in consideration and say there were 10 developments built in the future like this? Um, if each development wanted to raise their number, would, I guess. Like a cumulative effect? Yes. Where do I have? Cumulative impact as far as discharges, um, we do consider we have to have a, someone can't just come in to the agency and say we want a permit. They have to provide a need or justification for the permit. And we do consider uh, other facilities within a certain area of an adjacent facility to see if this facility could possibly tie into that facility if they have the uh, MGD the space to acquire more uh, flow at an existing facility but that is considered in the permit application uh, if that answers your question it does thank you okay now on the front row someone had a question on the front row <coughs> I just want to ask the engineers um, I didn't understand so if there's a bad flood from your facility? If like another Harvey comes through, does the discharge from the waste management plant continue to flow out? I mean, or do y'all stop it or what? I think we would all know and appreciate based on the recent events that having running water and running wastewater is key to keeping people living during a tragic event like Harvey. So yes. We will keep the facility operational during a flooding event if it is, was to occur. I can appreciate that, but I can also appreciate the people that have had to suffer through these floods. But anyway, um, I was looking at your your uh, planning, your, your hydraulic study, and all the other studies and all that. Some of the material, uh, the grass that you were using were from 2014. That concerned me because a lot has happened since then. And also, um, I'm concerned that, you know, we're using a 100-year flood model, you know, example, but, but we've had such massive flooding. I mean, it just goes beyond that. I mean, Houston, they're requiring people that are rebuilding to require them to build up to the 500. I just don't know why we, we're, we just don't require more in this county So we'll flow, overflow and have a slush thing going on like the San Jose River Authority. They had wastewater that actually seeped out by accident. They said it wasn't a flush, but I don't know. Could you, is there a question? Or well, I'm asking them um, that, uh, did you did you use any, any material more current than 2014 when you were looking at all this? Or have you, look, you looked at old records and old So, Montgomery County is the floodplain administrator and the one who reviews and approves this, the Montgomery County Engineering Department. Typically, when you do hydraulic studies, you have to use the best available information. And the best available information in this case is those 2014 numbers. Yeah. So, it's the adopted floodplain maps. You use all the information that's out there. And remember, not only people outside the community are affected by flooding, but people inside of this community will be affected by flooding. And not only are we concerned about residents outside, but we're concerned about residents inside because nobody wants to buy a home in a brand new community that has flooded streets and flooded homes. It makes for a tough sales pitch. Uh, we're 
proposing a drainage system that meets all the county rules and requirements. Uh, this system should improve drainage in the area. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Well, um, to answer your first question about finding out information, um, the application itself, the draft permit, are all available for public viewing, copying, I do believe, hold on. Um, Okay, so uh, yeah, the, the permit application is available for viewing and copying at the South Regional Library, I believe. Um, and also, uh, regional Houston Regional Office has the application, and it, it's also on our database. Uh, not, not the application, but um, uh, in the CCO, you can, uh, it, the, T, the TCEQ's main office, you can uh, make copies there. But for you guys, since you're so far away, no one's really gonna travel to Austin. The, 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 right, the most local place you can go to to find this information about the application is uh, at the South Regional Library. So you can't tell me where the drainage is going from this map on? Oh, on the map, that, that would be the this application. This is the applicant's <laughs> map. I know, but that drainage, where does it go from there? That's the applicant's question. So I'll be glad to answer that question for you. So we are proposed, proposing a drainage channel system that starts in the northern part up near 242, which is, you see one piece of it here. Uh, it continues southward, it crosses 1314, and then it continues about five miles south to the river. It goes direct to the river, of which several miles of that was this mud acquired an off-site drainage easement across private property uh, to provide for a discharge to the river. How do I find the map of that? Uh, that map, that drainage route, route is located inside of the approved drainage study. So I'm sure you can get that through Montgomery County. The drainage route's also in our TCQ application as well. Okay, are there any new questions? I want I want to um, thank the developer um, for meeting with us and for making the change of the location for the sewage treatment plant. I think that was that was a big deal. My question for TCEQ is: they had a permit to do that. Did they have to get re-permitted and re-approved in order to make that move? Um, so, John. They have already done what they're supposed to do. When they, when they sent information to us that they want to move the facility, we collected all the data and go through our processing, go through our processing sections to make sure that nothing is changed. Yes, anything that is changed does not impact the effluent limitation or the usefulness of this very permit. So, so the, have the location change didn't matter, it's just the, yes, the, the effluent that's going out, that's the only thing that really matters. Yes, the location change did not change anything from what we reviewed initially. All right, do we have any new questions? We're gonna start wrapping up the Q&A so we can move towards the comments. Um, again, if you asked a question, you got an answer, but you still feel a concern, um, then you wanna make that in this next period, the formal comment. You wanna sign up to speak. 
um, so that you can put that part of the record and they can consider that in the review process. So are there any last questions that anyone wants to ask at this time? And again, you can call into the agency, you can get their business card, or during the break or after the meeting, you can come up and ask questions. Um, but I'll take this, yes sir, I'll take this last question. Questions. Okay, come on up. And I'll be brief because I don't like them going on. <clears throat> the um, discharge channel, I don't know who this might be directed to, <clears throat> it, um, you've done some of these before, does it, does it, uh, is this one designed where it would be dry between discharges once a day or is it continual or how, does it get dried out because we've read and we've discussed, we've been discussing this a lot, sometimes the discharge or the, it, if it's not wet all the time, it gets, it doesn't do right. The, the wastewater treatment plant will continuously discharge as people use, you know, use the uh, facilities and, and uh, produce the waste leaving the home. That happens 24 hours a day. So that permitted amount, the 1.2 million gallons a day, is, is really spread throughout the day. And so there will be effluent, treated effluent, discharged out of that plant continuously. That, in a dry summer, would that amount make it five miles down the channel? It'll probably soak in, evaporate, disappear, um, or, you know, I'm not quite sure how, how to answer your question, but it, it, it will have continuous flow in it, whether it will go all the way to the creek or not in a dry, hot summer, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, the last one I heard from some other discussions that, that did question come up. The discharge um, is, um, when it comes out of the plant, is it considered drinkable? It's not a public water supply. The discharge is not considered drinkable. Yes, I, it is. It's not considered, no, it's not. Oh. We do not consider it drinkable. For you to be able to drink the discharge, it has to flow into a stream, then you can draw the water from the stream and treat it to drinking water quality standard before drinking it. Okay. That's all I have. Yes, sir. On the discharge, questions I had before was EA with these pipes, with these uh, pathways for the discharge. Are they going to be concrete lined or are they going to be soil? The drainage is mainly consisted of an earthen channel. Uh, there will be sections of it that are concrete lined due to velocity concerns, <coughs> uh, bins, things that the county requires us to line those. Uh, but the majority of the channel will be an earthen channel, grass lined, okay. maintained by Montgomery County Mud 111. Okay, so the uh, growth will be controlled somehow by grass and all that? Yes, the Mud District will maintain, will own, operate, and maintain those channels. Okay. This, the okay. county has no role in our drainage facilities other than review and approve. Of the facility, but once it's constructed and built and operational, <coughs> it becomes the MUDS facility. Okay, so concrete, pipe, and then earth. Got it. Yep. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned the design of these dishes, and I was, I was just curious. Uh, since you're going to be releasing 1.2 million gallons a day, continuous basis, throughout the day, uh, what, is, what is the capacity of those drainage ditches? Because some day it's going to be heavy along with the discharge. So have you figured out what's the capacity of those dishes for, for draining, for carrying all that water to the the room? About the minimum drainage capacity for the dishes that we're digging out there is somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 600 cubic feet per second discharge. And remember our plan, as I discussed earlier, is discharging two. Uh, our chain drainage channels obviously get progressively larger as we move further and further downstream and take on more flow. Uh, at the end, like I said, it carries about 5,500 cubic feet per second 
Uh, it'll be uh, 30 foot bottom width, four to one side slopes, be about 25 feet deep where it leaves the development and heads to the offsite section. So currently there is no flat, no map flood floodplain within this development. So well, with we that- see, We see how the water flows out of our subdivision. It flows right back to where y'all are at. And we see what happens every time there's a change made back there now. It comes right back on us. So with that said, there's no fill being proposed on any of our lots in our development. The area where we are filling is due to low areas that need to be filled up to the adjacent acreage to reclaim them. But we're not filling, we're not changing any drainage, drainage patterns out there upstream. Yes, sir. You mentioned that you all are using an urban channel. Is there any negative side effects or impacts of the environment around the channel dump at their property as far as um, maybe a future? In other words, if you have an earthen channel dump, what would be the environmental impact of you having waste going to an earthen channel? You don't want to get into the same just in town. Yep. As, as uh, John had mentioned earlier, the waste the treated effluent coming out of the plant you know has a limitation a quality standard that it has to meet and so as part as part of contamination uh, that the water coming out of the treated effluent coming out of the wastewater treatment plant will not degrade or or, or worsen the water quality well, well i'm asking more the, the the soil quality the, the actual the, the land as because of the effluent uh, it, 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 it will not degrade the water which is in contact with the soil so it's not going to make what's already there any worse um, with the limitations that the state uh, the TCEQ determines is appropriate for that discharge uh, so if the water isn't any worse the plant that's discharging that water won't cause the soil around the channel to be okay, so any worse well, I'm still asking that, that question because over time these levels build up it's not like you know this right now, years down the line, this waste treatment might still going to be there. So looking forward in the future, you know, that's a question that should be asked. If you have any type of environmentalists or no geologists that can give you that type of a, a um, foresight in your project. Okay, I think I believe this question is um, kind of in terms of a cumulative effect of the treated wastewater being there year after year, 10 years from now. We know it's treated, right? And so it's not to worsen the condition of the water, but just the fact that it's been there over 10 or 20 years, are you saying? Right, that's like saying I'm gonna put some water down the down this line, we're not that just a little bit of lime in it, but continue that for 10 years, 15 years or not, you're gonna have an accumulative, this is gonna be accumulative. So, go ahead. So, um, the review for a wastewater permit um, is really focused on the water quality, uh, soil concerns aren't something that are within our jurisdiction to consider. Um, if this were a land application permit, that would be we would have a geologist review uh, an application for that where the wastewater was being land applied, but for a, a wastewater permit uh, where there's just a discharge into uh, surface water within the state that is limited to our standards and a dissolved oxygen review with the quality of the water, uh, impacts on the quality of the water. Okay, 
I was asking because they're they're because it is soil and it's not concrete or something, so some, some other barrier. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So unless this is gonna be my last question. Come on up. And then we're gonna take a very short break to get ready for the formal comments. My problem is I have a little bit concerned with hearing about soil, wastewater. Most of the adjoining properties to this development have wells. Now, if they're putting all those homes in there, is that going to, could it affect our drinking water? And where are they getting all their water? Is it going to affect our wells by them using so much water for this development? I mean, where are they getting their drinking water and that water for their homes? The, the drinking water from for this proposed development does it is groundwater um, and that is regulated by the Lone Star uh, Groundwater Conservation District. When our applicant, uh, when, when we applied for a well permit for drinking water purposes, uh, Lone Star does all that modeling. They determine what rate can be withdrawn from the aquifer without impacting uh, the, the level of the aquifer in the neighborhood or the groundwater. Um, they require certain distances away from the, our property boundaries. So our drawdown of our well, if it was right next to somebody else's well, yes, it would certainly affect that. But they, they have a very specific cr criteria, Lone Star uh, Groundwater Conservation District does, that uh, they regulate that and set very specific withdrawal rates that are allowed. Um, and, and we have already uh, gone through that permitting process for our drinking water well. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's take less than a five minute break, um, about three or four minutes. Again, the restrooms are in the foyer. If you do not sign up to speak orally, then I am opening up the formal comments portion of the public meeting for Montgomery County MUD number 111. Application for a new municipal wastewater facility, TPDES permit number WQ00156160018. As a reminder, during the taking of formal comments, neither the TC nor the applicant representatives will speak, only the members of the public. This is your opportunity to address the TCQ with your concerns, your issues, or any additional questions that you want part of the record. You will be responded to in writing in the executive director's response to comments. Today is the end of the comment period, so this is your last opportunity to enter comments into the record, whether it is speaking tonight or turning in any written comments before you leave. I will announce the speakers in the order that they signed up. I apologize in advance if I mispronounce your name. When you come up, please come up to the microphone. State your first and last name for the record. And then go ahead and address the TCQ with your comments. I'm going to go ahead and let you know the first few so that you'll be ready. Paul Krausen is going to be first up, followed by Leah Tarrant, then Kenneth Porter, and then Eric Alman. Okay? So is Paul Krausen still here? All right. These are going to be entered, written, as well as... Okay, so you want to speak them first? I want to speak it. I want to and speak then if you want to, you can add. Write it down and turn it in. Oh, very good. Same thing. Um, these are my comments. Um, I'll try not to be lengthy about it. I got, a, <clears throat> I got an email from a, um, just Friday, from a Eric Allman um, talking about moving this plant. I don't know who that is. He's, he had, he, are y'all familiar with this letter that I got by email? Well, I'm sorry, I got this got to be just a comment. I don't, it's got to be a comment, right? Well, I just read off several people who are going to speak, okay. and Eric Allman is one of them. Okay, well, I'll let him address it in his way then. Um, but I don't like what I see here. I'm, I'm happy um, with the big picture of what's going on here. I want that to be on record. Um, 
but we're going we're to continue to look over the shoulders of everybody um, and watch them. Uh, the uh, uh, I want to uh, let it be known uh, that uh, we, uh, myself, I, I, seeing is believing. When we see, if we see any flooding, um, uh, then um, we would call for another hearing. We want to uh, definitely come back uh, to the table with a hearing or something about that. And um, uh, so, since it's a since it's a, a voice comment, I'm going to read off the permit number. So, permit number WQ 00156160016. Comments regarding the application of Montgomery County MUD number 111 uh, submitted by uh, Eric Allman and it mentions things about Allendale um, in the neighborhood and about not agreeing, if I'm reading it right, with the uh, moving the, the, the uh, sewer plant and I, I don't agree with that and uh, I would, I, I don't like, I don't, I don't like what I see here, however I got it. Um, and, uh, The, uh, uh, we're, we, uh, I want to, to uh, see, see it continue uh, with, um, uh, with things the way that um, we have them right now. That's my comment. Okay, thank you. So if you want to submit anything in writing, it has to be done tonight. I will. Okay. Leah? I no longer have a comment. Okay. Is Kenneth Porter here? Kenneth Porter. Okay. Eric Alma. Eric Allman with the firm of Frederick, Corrales, Allman, and Rockwell here on behalf of Clean Water Action. First, I do want to thank the agency staff and the applicant for coming to the meeting and providing the explanations you have. Clean Water Action expressed some concerns in our comments. And we have some in addition, in addition to those we previously expressed. I want to, we have concern as to the characterization of the discharge point. Um, there is no water in the state or natural water course at what has been labeled the discharge point here. The gentleman here from the applicant earlier this evening said this discharge point was into the San Jacinto River. Um, the discharge point should be characterized as the place where this discharge reaches a water in the state that is within the jurisdiction of the state of Texas and that analysis hasn't happened. We are concerned that the applicant has not demonstrated compliance with the flooding requirements of the TCEQ. You do have a role in flooding, particularly in protection of the wastewater treatment plant. Um, we don't think that it's been demonstrated this is adequately protected against the impacts of the flooding. Um, Houston has had several 100 year floods within the past several years. Those maps are not reliable have good information on that. Um, this agency permitted a wastewater treatment plant within one of the reservoirs that's flooded, that was then inundated. Um, certainly <coughs> it's shown that people have reason for concern. We have concern with water quality impacts of this. This will be into the west fork of the San Jacinto River, which is impaired for bacteria. Um, the permit is not adequately protective against bacteria impacts. We are concerned with groundwater impacts. As noted, there are a number of people here who have groundwater wells, and as noted, this is going into a ditch that has earth as the liner. Um, some of this contamination will reach the groundwater, and so we think that that, that is something the TCEQ is able to address. Um, you are to site a plant in a way that minimizes impacts upon surface water and groundwater, um, and so we have that concern. Um, we are concerned, we have no necessarily issue with, we like applicants responding to concerns expressed by citizens, and we're fine with the movement of the plant when it's done properly in the discharge point. The issue here is that you've already had a technical summary, you've had a technical decision, you've had what the EPA would call the fact sheet already issued in this case, and after the issuance of your fact sheet, you move to the discharge point and the location of the treatment plant. We're not saying that's a bad location or a bad plan, we're saying as a matter of process, making that type of substantial change to the plant and to the discharge point um, after the fact sheet has been issued, after you've got a determination by the staff, um, 
raises concerns both technically as whether the evaluation has been done properly and notice concern as whether those people who received the first notice, the notice of application, and we have gone to look at the application in the library up until only a few weeks ago, would have thought the plans and the discharge were at one location. As of three weeks ago, it's not a different location. Those people who looked and saw it at one spot may have decided that they were not concerned so there are notice issues with regard to the movement of this at that point in time. And uh, earlier during the period that was not on the record, there was concern expressed for the operation of the plant during flood events. That is a concern we would. I respect that you need to provide wastewater service during flood events. We think that it would be wise to look at requiring emergency storage in this case so that the applicant could continue to provide that wastewater service and have the emergency storage necessary to ensure that you're not endangering or creating problems during a flood event. Um, so generally, we think that the applicant needs to show better emergency preparedness in this case. And those are our comments. And thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. The next few people up are Rhonda Clifford, Bob Bagley, and William Wyndham. So is Rhonda Clifford still present? <clears throat> I'm still a little concerned about the first and last name. Okay, I'm still a little concerned about the flood issue. No, your first and last name. Oh, I can't hear. That's the problem. Okay. My name is Rhonda Clifford. Okay, I'm, I'm still a little concerned about the flood issues. I'm concerned, <clears throat> like the gentleman just said, that you know there should be some storage facility to where, when there is a flood, you know, we don't continue to discharge to make things worse for people downstream. And I wish we could reclaim and use, you know, uh, use the treated water for irrigation in, in Montgomery County is what we need to start doing is looking at using this treated water for irrigation. A lot of our big cities in Texas are doing that and city, big cities in other states because it's real practical. We don't take away from the groundwater and we're not just polluting all our other streams, just used for irrigation. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Is Bob Bagley still present? Bob Bagley. I am, I'm not going to Okay. William Wyndham? I'm, I'm good, it's been answered. Okay. Thomas Lott, Tommy? My concern, as I said in my question, is uh, anytime you add water drainage to an existing body of water that's already shown lots of flooding over the past few years, especially in the last three or four years, I've seen water in places here uh, when it rains heavily that I've never seen before, and I've lived in this area 45 years. Uh, I've seen people in my subdivision flood in the last three years that I've never seen flood in the 45 years I've been here before. So every time that something's added to it, the uh, amount of drainage is affected. And therefore, I'm concerned that even though you have drainage and you have a drainage ditch going to there, I'm concerned about not having any tension. And I understand what you said about the uh, county not having the tension required. But as many times as I've been on subdivisions all over Harris County and other places, the tension ponds were, were a necessity on most of them. And it always, to me, would look better to have a big pond there with a 24-inch pipe drain than to have uh, a large ditch running straight to the uh, river. Uh, perhaps I'm wrong, I'm not educated in that kind of stuff, but I know experience for 45 years of building subdivisions. And I'm concerned about uh, no teaching. Thank you very much. And appreciate y'all taking the time to come out and answer our questions. Thank you, sir. Is Julie Lugo still present? Um, my name is Julie Lugo, and to me, this is like the first time I've been up here um, listening to this, and it's 
it's new to me and I live in Allendale subdivision. And I'm actually uh, reconstructing my house from hurricanes and floods. And, um, and my question is also, well, I'm sorry, we're not in any questions anymore, is that um, many people are affected, not just Allendale, um, but it stays Kingwood, all further down the line, and we've seen flooding after flooding. And it's not just Harvey and I, it's rains three days and it's flooding all throughout the subject. So that's, thank you. Thank you. So at this time, I call all those who signed up to speak. Again, this is the close of the comment period, so it is your last opportunity to make an oral comment or to submit a written comment. Um, and as staff mentioned that it would be necessary for you to raise your issues tonight, uh, unless you already did so, um, through written comment to the TCQ in order to file your hearing request down the road. Is there anyone else who would like to speak who has not had an opportunity to do so? Okay. Okay, then with that, I'm going to close the public meeting for Montgomery County MUD number 111, application for municipal wastewater facility, TPDES permit number WQ 00156160001. The next mailing that will come from TCQ to those who are on the mailing list, meaning those who had submitted comment will be on the mailing list, or if you requested to be on the mailing list, like you could have done that tonight at the registration table, you will receive the executive director's written response um, to any comments that were on file already or that were made tonight. If we will be here a few minutes packing up our equipment, so you're free to come up and speak to staff if you have additional questions. Thank you and drive safe. Thank you. Okay. So really, you hear me. This way, it's going to water the turf at the bottom and required by the county to accommodate the off-site drains that are actually close to our uh, developed area. Okay, yeah, so, so basically anybody that borders either side of that pit may see some relief from flooding as a result of the test. That's correct. Okay. And 